Welcome back to Hardware Unboxed. We all know alongside the release of AMD's brand new Navi GPUs, the company rolled out two new features in their Radeon driver suite. Last week, I looked at one of those features, Radeon image sharpening, and today I'm back to do an in-depth analysis of the second, and that's Radeon anti-lag. The basic goal of Radeon anti-lag is to reduce input lag while gaming. Input lag is the delay between when you make an input like a mouse click or key press and when the action takes place on your display. For fast-paced competitive games, especially shooters like CSGO, Overwatch, or Fortnite, it's key to have the lowest possible input lag so you can spot your enemies, target them with your weapon, and shoot them as quickly and smoothly as possible. Input lag is a combination of many factors, some involve your peripheral hardware like your monitor, mouse and keyboard, some involve how fast your CPU and GPU are at processing frames, but Radeon Anti-Lag is primarily focused with reducing lag in the driver stage, and I think AMD do a great job of explaining how it works in more detail, so I'll quote them here. Games produce frames of animation by pairing work done on the CPU with work done on the GPU. The CPU begins its work first and it feeds work to the GPU as it works its way through a frame. In most use cases, the GPU workload is the primary performance constraint. We call this a GPU limited scenario. In such scenarios, games perform the CPU work at least one frame ahead of the GPU work, resulting in two frames of latency in total. The delay between the click of the mouse registered during the CPU work for the frame and the response on the screen produced by the GPU can expand to cover the time required for the GPU to process two full frames or more. At 60 FPS, that delay is 33.3 milliseconds, two frames at 16.7 milliseconds each or more. In such cases, Radeon Anti-Lag dynamically improves the pacing of the CPU work, allowing the CPU work to overlap a significant portion of the GPU work so the CPU doesn't get too far ahead of the GPU. As a result, Radeon Anti-Lag can, in theory, shrink input lag by almost a full frame, nearly 16.7 milliseconds at 60 FPS, restoring responsiveness to your game. The impact is quicker response times and a more direct connection between your actions and the results shown on screen. So that's basically the gist of it. Radeon Anti-Lag can reduce input lag by up to a full frame, according to AMD, when mostly GPU limited. And we'll get into the implications of this when we put up some beautiful blue graphs. For now, there's a few other things to talk about. One is that Radeon Anti-Lag works on any recent AMD GPU or APU, so not just new Navi GPUs. However, it only works in DirectX 11 titles, unless you have a Navi GPU, in which case it also works for DirectX 9. No AMD GPU supports this technology in DirectX 12, Vulkan, or OpenGL. A lot of popular competitive games have DX11 modes, so that's not necessarily a bad thing, but naturally as more games begin to use new APIs, Radeon Anti-Lag will need to evolve to also support them. There are three ways to enable anti-lag. One is via the game profile settings, another is via Radeon Overlay, and that's the method I most commonly used, and the last is via the Alt-L global shortcut. In all three cases, it's just a simple toggle and gets to work right away, even in game. For testing, I decided to measure the entire click to response input lag using the same testing tools as for my monitor review. So this is a photo detector placed on the screen as well as a mouse input, both hooked up directly to an oscilloscope. Using this method, we can record the precise time we ask a game to do something like shoot a weapon, and then the precise time this action is shown on the screen. We expect Radeon Anti-Lag to have the lowest response time numbers over a 20 sample average for each test. The hardware for testing is also fast. For the GPU, I've used AMD's new Radeon RX 5700 XT, paired with Intel's Core i9 9900K, which remains the fastest CPU for gaming. I've then used the fastest display I have on hand, Pixio's brand new PX5 Hayabusa, our uh, review is coming on that soon, which is a 1080p 240Hz display with 0.6 millisecond response times. So let's start the testing here with Rainbow Six Siege. As you can see, I've tested three different modes. We've got VSync on, VSync off, and FreeSync on, with both Radeon Anti-Lag enabled and disabled. Doing input lag testing takes a lot of time, so I'm not going to go into a heap of games, but the ones I do have, including Rainbow Six Siege, should cover most bases. This is a game that generally has very low input latency. Part of this is because it runs extremely well. I was pushing above 200 FPS in my testing without much sweat, and high frame rates have a significant impact in reducing input latency. So across the board here, we're pretty much in that 17 to 22 milliseconds of input latency zone, which is lightning quick. Radeon Anti-Lag did produce consistently faster results for two of the three test conditions. 
For VSync off, we shaved off 2.3 milliseconds, and for FreeSync, we shaved off about 2 milliseconds. There's no difference for VSync on gaming, not that we'd recommend using VSync for any input lag sensitive games. Given the game was running at around 220 FPS in this testing, it seems Radeon Anti-Lag shaved off around half a frame's worth of latency, with each frame lasting 4.5 milliseconds at this frame rate. Now, a 2.3 millisecond reduction or 13% improvement to input latency doesn't sound all that impressive, but there's a few things to keep in mind. AMD did say that we can expect up to around a single frame of latency improvement. However, given we are gaming at such a high frame rate to begin with, that one frame isn't actually all that much latency. AMD also said anti-lag works best when games are GPU limited, and when running at over 200 FPS, generally the CPU is already doing quite a bit of the work. I've also got results here from an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 2070 playing the game at the same frame rate, so around the 220 FPS mark. Input latency was a little high in general, so anti-lag does provide the best overall performance. However, given we're only talking about a 4 millisecond difference, it's not a significant result in my opinion. Next up we have Fortnite, and again, this is a game that's going to run really well on most hardware. Even playing the game on the Epic preset at 1080p, I was achieving 170 FPS or so during testing, so a lot of the same issues as Rainbow Six Siege are present here. Radeon Anti-Lag was consistently faster, in the range of 2 to 4 milliseconds better, but with frames coming in every 5.9 milliseconds or so, we simply aren't going to get much more of a reduction in input latency. In fact, AMD says that the benefits of Radeon Anti-Lag are most pronounced when gaming between 60 and 90 FPS, and in the two games we've tested so far, even with maximum quality settings, I was easily more than double that sort of frame rate. This is pretty important to know and will factor into the conclusion in just a moment or two. But before that, I did want to test a game I knew would hit AMD's sweet spot zone, and that's Metro Exodus. In this title, I set the game to the extreme preset and was hitting around 75 FPS in our test area. And as expected, the advantages to Radeon Anti-Lag were more obvious here. I saw a reduction in input lag of between 4.6 and 10.6 milliseconds, depending on the sync method used, with that latter number showing that we're getting near a full frame reduction in Metro Exodus. At these frame rates, achieving 18% better performance or a 15% reduction in input lag is a strong result compared to what we've seen. The final game I found really interesting was Battlefield 5. This game has a mode called Future Frame Rendering in it, which you can switch off for better latency according to the in-game information. So for testing, I set that mode to off as, and went about comparing anti-lag on and off. As it turns out, anti-lag has next to no effect when this mode is already enabled. So it seems that at least for this title running in its DX11 mode, developer EA DICE had already figured out how to minimize input latency and implemented their own toggles. So yeah, that's kind of neat. Now you might be wondering, if Radeon anti-lag improves input lag in games, why isn't this just enabled by default? Is there any downside? And the answer to that is yes, but in some situations, it's not really a significant downside. I tested a number of games with Radeon Anti-Lag on and off to see the performance impact. Several of these had a negligible performance drop. We're talking 1 FPS in Metro Exodus, 3 FPS in Rainbow Six Siege, less than 1 FPS in Resident Evil 2, and no difference in Battlefield 5, all looking at average frame rates. The impact to 1% lows could be anywhere from delivering a consistent improvement to lowering performance slightly. However, there were also some titles where the performance impact was more substantial. In Fortnite, I saw a 6% drop to performance, or 7 FPS looking at average frame rates, with an even larger drop to 1% lows. The hit was even larger in Hitman 2 at over 11%. AMD says it isn't unusual to see a performance impact in some titles but not others, so your mileage will vary. Certainly sometimes you can enable anti-lag without worrying, at other times the hit will be noticeable. So that's the testing I managed to get done for this video. Sorry, it wasn't a bit more comprehensive, but to get this level of consistency and accuracy with input lag testing, it does take a lot of repetition and results. In any case, I think it paints an interesting picture and there's a few things I want to discuss. So firstly, it's clear that Radeon Anti-Lag does what it sets out to do. AMD said it delivers about a one frame improvement to input lag in GPU limited scenarios and works best when gaming in the 60 to 90 FPS range. And that's exactly what I found. In high frame rate situations, you might get a 2 to 4 millisecond improvement, which is up to one frame, and then at lower frame rates I saw up to a 10 millisecond improvement. The trade-off is in some games you will see a performance impact, in others you won't, it just varies a bit. 
This is all fine, it works, it's good, but I just don't think it's as important or revolutionary as AMD suggested it is. Let's look at this chart in particular from their Radeon Anti-Lag website, which shows a range of competitive games receiving 20 to 35% reductions to input latency with anti-lag enabled. Why is this different to my testing? Well, that's because AMD tested these games running at 60 to 90 FPS, rather than the hundreds of frames per second you'd normally expect. In fact, if you look at the fine print, AMD says they tested with the Core i7-9700K, which is a fast gaming CPU, but chose to use a 3840x2160 resolution, aka 4K. Now normally, don't have any problem with that, testing games at 4K is fine, some people will be playing at 4K, but they're your more casual, quality-focused gamers who want the best visuals. Competitive gamers who are highly sensitive to input latency, the target for a feature like Radeon Anti-Lag, definitely will not or at least should not be gaming at 4K. 4K. The reason for that is gaming at 4K considerably reduces your frame rate compared to playing at a lower resolution like 1080p, and one of the simplest ways to reduce input latency is to increase the frame rate. This is why most serious competitive gamers play at 1080p low settings with high refresh rate displays and fast CPUs. They're often CPU limited and playing at 200 plus FPS to ensure their gameplay is smooth, responsive, and only minimally affected by input lag. So with a proper gaming setup for low latency performance, and I didn't go especially overboard to achieve this in my testing, in fact I often used ultra quality settings as opposed to low quality settings, Radeon Anti-Lag is only going to deliver maybe a 5 millisecond or so reduction to input latency. For highly sensitive gamers this, well, it might be a big deal, but I certainly could not tell the difference when gaming, although I'm not the sort of person that is overly sensitive to input lag to begin with. The only conclusion I can come to is Radeon Anti-Lag really isn't designed for true competitive gamers that want super low input latency because the gains you get in latency tuned scenarios are minimal. This leaves it in kind of a weird position. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not a bad feature or useless or anything like that. If you are casually gaming in that 60 to 90 FPS zone for whatever reason, and you just want a reduction in input latency, great, you can now hit a button and shave off maybe 10 to 15 milliseconds. But if you're more serious about reducing input lag, you'll get a much bigger improvement out of simply increasing your frame rate, and that could be by lowering the settings. In Battlefield 5, for example, turning down some settings and going from 70 to 120 FPS shaved off 22 milliseconds of input lag and delivered smoother gameplay. And that's what I'd recommend doing first, but in the process, of course, it will diminish the advantage you can get from anti-lag. I guess in the end, I was hoping Radeon Anti-Lag would be a significant feature for those who are most concerned about input lag, the highly competitive, skilled, latency-sensitive gamers, the ones that research input lag and optimize their setups accordingly. Instead, while it does have a minor impact for those gamers, Radeon Anti-Lag is more suited to improving the casual gaming experience, which I'm not sure cares about a one-frame input latency reduction all that much, especially if there's a potential for a drop in frame rate. The one use case I could see this being handy for are the competitive gamers who have low-end hardware, maybe a Ryzen 5 3400G or something like that, who would already be playing at 1080p low settings on the integrated graphics and sitting around that frame rate sweet spot for Radeon Anti-Lag. With nowhere lower to go in terms of getting better frame rates, it could be a handy toggle to reduce input latency further, maybe that's something to explore in a future video. Anyway. That's it on Radeon Anti-Lag for now. Interested to hear your thoughts in the comments below on how useful this sort of thing will be for you, whether that one frame improvement is something that you're after and whether you'll be tolerating that performance hit in some titles. Consider subscribing for more hardware testing. We also have our Patreon page if you want to support us. I'll catch you in the next one.